Well, my friends, you know what's my favorite time of the month as Google just released a new Android update for us with Android 16 Beta 2. This time around, there are quite a few developer-focused changes, as expected if you're familiar with things like this, but there are also some user-facing changes you might want to have on your radar that we can take a look at real quick. There's quite a bit we have to cover today, so let's get into it. And of course, if you appreciate our Android coverage, go on ahead and subscribe to the 95 Google YouTube channel because we have a lot more videos like this coming your way. Let's immediately start with what you're most likely to notice if you install the Android 16 Beta 2 update. One of the first items we spotted was a new home screen widget called Switch Users. This allows you, as the name implies, to quickly switch between user profiles directly from the home screen or access deeper settings related to user accounts. Another nice addition is an entirely new menu under settings, system, and gestures called Double Press Power Button. Inside that menu, there's a new option to open the wallet app upon a double press instead of launching the camera app. This works very similarly to iOS where double tapping the power button opens Apple Wallet. Personally, I think it's a good choice to have, especially since you can use the lock screen shortcut for the camera, giving you more flexibility if needed. Hopefully in the future, this can be expanded to include more apps, options, and actions, but for now, it's a good start. As for some of the more minor changes, we noticed the settings submenus are a bit darker than they appeared on previous betas, which were closer to a grayish tone. To be fair, it is hard to see on camera, but trust me, it is much darker. Also, there's a new animation for the Pixel 9 series for the Attic Lands widget when unlocking the device. We also saw a small text change in the color and contrast settings where maximize text contrast has been changed to text outlines. And if you hop into the settings and storage tab, the OS name under the system tab has been changed from Android 15 to Android Baklava. Lastly, just to round up any more changes, it is worth noting Google fixed a few bugs with this update. Most importantly, they fixed an issue that sometimes caused the system UI to crash when interacting with certain elements in web views. They also fixed an issue that sometimes caused devices to freeze and restart during calls, and they fixed an issue that caused the Google Home app to crash when running on Android 16 beta builds. However, funnily enough, there is still that bug from the previous beta where the font slash text for the date and time is still too dark to see. Hopefully, that gets touched on soon. It's also worth mentioning we are now on the February 2025 security patch, so you do have some peace of mind knowing that you're on the latest security protocol available at this time. As for the developer focus updates, I'm going to kind of oversimplify here as a lot of these changes are more on the technical side, but I wanted to break it down for those of you who are interested. For one, the back end of Android 16 beta 2 mostly includes camera enhancements, particularly with the implementation of what's called hybrid auto exposure, which gives app developers more nuanced controls over camera exposure settings. This should be more helpful to precisely manage the brightness of images in a wider variety of lighting conditions. Android 16 beta 2 also adds precise color, temperature, and tint adjustments, giving professional video recording apps finer control over their white balance settings. This could be useful in situations where phones don't have a log option, but still want to achieve a specific look. And there were some adjustments to the motion photo capture pipeline that should make it easier for developers to use or access motion photos in their applications. Personally, I'm a huge fan of any changes that make it easier for developers to better utilize camera functions, so I hope we see much more of this in the future. Moving on, there are some changes to how Android 16 handles audio and picture profiles when it comes to television-focused streaming hardware. Streaming apps will now have the option to dynamically apply picture profiles to individual pieces of media. This could mean color accuracy is better adjusted for movies with wide dynamic range, let's say, or prioritizing brightness for live sporting events as an example. In terms of customization, we did get a new system setting that allows users to change their measurement system for your region. So in this case, you can choose the metric system, US Imperial or UK Imperial measurements, or leave it to the regional default. You should be able to set that system preference now by navigating to settings, system, and languages and region. Google also announced a new live wallpaper framework with a new content API that on a basic level should make them more seamless to the end user. And finally, the last developer focus change I wanted to point out was a new resource estimation metric that is now available for games and high performance apps. This is designed to better communicate the available GPU and CPU resources, which in turn should hopefully improve performance and battery life to some degree. This should be more impactful, especially these days as smartphone chips have become even more efficient, so I'm excited to see how this plays out. Again, a lot of updates that give developers better tools to maximize their applications, and at least on the back end, Android 16 Beta 2 does seem to be full of some useful changes. In terms of when you can try this out for yourself, obviously the beta is public and you can opt in where you will get an OTA update once enrolled. 
Bolt for the Pixel 6, 7, 8, and 9 series, as well as the Pixel Tablet and both Pixel Folds. We've been running it on our devices for a while now, and it's pretty stable from what we've personally experienced so far. In day-to-day -day use, I don't really notice too much of a difference on my Pixel 9 Pro on the stable build versus my Pixel 9 on the beta build. Performance is good, battery is good, and there's no real issues on my end to speak of. Just keep in mind, if you do want to go back to the Android 15 stable build, you will have to factory reset your device and start fresh, so just be aware of that. For the full release, we're still not 100% sure yet. We know Google is targeting an earlier release in general to better align with the flagship Pixel release schedule, and according to their public timelines, they're working towards platform stability in March and a full release sometime after April. It's possible at this rate we could see the stable version released at Google I.O. in May. That. I will say, would be a fun way to kick off the event, especially as an Android fan. For now, we'll have to wait and see, but stay tuned to our channel for our coverage as we will be on the ground at Google I.O. covering the event, and again, you can't miss out on any of it. Regardless, Android 16 has been fine so far. Really, we've seen a lot of light backend updates for the most part. I think the biggest goal with this release is to have it stable and ready much earlier than in years past. And since we're in the early days, a lot of implementations have really been developer focused, so I'm hopeful more consumer facing changes are coming soon. With that said, I'll leave it to you guys now. As we're starting to get into our final few updates with Android 16, have you liked what you're seeing so far? Are you liking the direct Google is going with this, and if not, please leave a comment and let us know what features or changes you're still hoping to see in the Android 16 full release. Myself and the Android community would love to hear your thoughts. In the meantime, I'm getting out of here, but before I do, huge shout out to our channel members on screen right now. Simply put, Damien and I greatly appreciate your support as we work super hard to make the best Android content on the platform. Until next time, this has been Jordan Floyd with 9to5Google. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.